there, everyone. Jason here with PurpleSec. I'm joined here with Josh Allen, who's our chief product officer and runs our vulnerability management program. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So to dive right back into it, Josh, what is vulnerability management? Hello. So vulnerability management, in short, is a management process designed to proactively identify, classify, remediate, and mitigate vulnerabilities in your business. The main goal of this is reducing risk to the organization. And it's really one of the foundational security practices that every business should be doing today. Great. And so when we talk about vulnerability management, um, there's sometimes a conflation between that and a vulnerability assessment. Can you tell our audience a little bit about what the difference is between the two? Sure. So vulnerability assessment should actually be a part of the vulnerability management life cycle. So the assessment really is just a step of identifying what's there, you know, what vulnerabilities do you have? What is the risk currently to your organization with those vulnerabilities? The vulnerability management life cycle is designed to take that and then create projects and prioritizations around um, assessing and remediating it. So uh, it's, it's really part of the steps is a vulnerability assessment. Gotcha. And you touched upon something really important, the vulnerability management life cycle. Right. Um, more holistic approach to managing your vulnerabilities. Um, vulnerability assessments are kind of a, 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 a stamp in time, right? Just a timestamp. Uh, right. Can you explain from a technical perspective what the vulnerability management life cycle is and the right. steps involved? Sure. So uh, as its name implies, it's actually a, a, a life cycle, meaning it's a repeated process that uh, or rather repeated set of processes that a business should conduct in order to constantly keep their risk down, uh, at least their vulnerability risk, right? So that life cycle starts with discovery and this is where the vulnerability assessment is done. This shows you what's there, where are we at today? And then you have to go on to prioritizing and assessing the risk so that you understand what is you know, most risky, where should we focus our efforts first then you have to create an actual plan. Uh, so most of the time that involves uh, patch management, right? Updating programs. That's really the basic bread and butter of vulnerability management is just keeping ahead of, um, you know, exposed risk through outdated software. And then there are other steps like configuration things that you may have to do in your environment that mitigate things like turning on better encryption or, you know, making sure that your certificate life cycle is managed properly. Um, and then once you've done that, you have to reassess again, which is going back through scanning, doing more vulnerability assessments. Um, and then based on that rescan, um, we basically go through the process again with the idea of improving it each time. So, you know, you're going to find that while you mitigated a lot of risk, there's always new zero days every month, every week, practically, you know, if you have an environment that is very complex, you might find that there's going to be a lot more vulnerabilities coming in. And so you'll have to you know, step up the sophistication of your life cycle. And when you're doing that retesting, you're, you're also constantly validating that these patches are, are going through and that everything is, is right. working as intended, right? It's broken. <laughs> Yeah, so everything is, you know, verification through every step. It's verify what's there, verify that you've remediated it, right? You know, you can say that, yeah, we went through and patched everything, but you have to know. So you've got to reassess it. Right, you don't know if you don't reassess. So that's from a technical perspective. Um, of course, there's a business component with this. So Definitely. how does that vulnerability management process work? From a business perspective so if you're a you know cio CISO, or a senior manager responsible for making sure your organization's risk is managed what you want to focus on is really less about the technical sides of how it's being done and you want to focus on risk in risk out so that means reporting. Reporting becomes very important for the business side of it. And, you know, some people find that boring. That's not the fun security aspect of things, but the reporting is extremely uh, important because we should be showing uh, your risk trending down or maintaining an acceptable level, right? It shouldn't be rising. Uh, and if it is rising, you also want to know why, right? Understanding the why behind things is important. It could be that 
you know, one of your processes, a critical vulnerability management process has failed in your organization and you need to address that. Um, it could be that one of your vendors was a huge risk and now they're flooding you with uh, all these vulnerabilities because some new kind of zero day has come out, things like that. So you're really concerned with ensuring that you've created a policy for vulnerability management that has um, risk ratings, it has the uh, acceptable risk ratings, and you've created some kind of classification around those, as well as timelines. It's very important to make sure you've established your timeline based on your business's appetite for risk. How long can you let criticals sit unpatched, right? How quickly do you need to react to those? A lot of organizations try to get to criticals within a week or less. Uh, if they're extra secure, um, but if it's large and complex, it can be very difficult to address things that fast. Right, and you know, from you know uh, an executive level, if you're trying to convince an executive to institute this type of program, you can't just say, "Hey, the bad guys are going to hit you." You have to sure. start to quantify that risk. You know, you know, we've mitigated X amount of attacks by attaching X amount of vulnerabilities, resulting in you know. Uh, $500,000 in potential savings, you know, as a result of a breach or something like that. Right. So you're talking about security, ROI, return on investment. If you're spending, you know, a half million, million dollars, or even $5,000 on a security program, you know, if you're a small business, you know, you want to make sure that those dollars and cents are going to addressing risk for your organization. That's ultimately the goal of any cybersecurity program is reducing the risk, reducing the threat landscape. Right. And so we, we've touched upon a, a few things here in this next question, but can you explain what some of the key benefits are for developing uh, a vulnerability management program for an organization? Definitely. So number one, it's cost effective. If your organization is not exposed to risk, you're not exposed to losing money through some kind of event, right? Um, also, if you don't have a properly set up cybersecurity program, uh, you may get denied for insurance claims for your cybersecurity or may not even get it, which can also cost you, you know, uh, contracts down the road. You may, you may end up being a third party risk. So it's actually cost effective to invest in one and show that you're doing your due diligence. It establishes and helps mature your security program. Um, it is, you know, I, I said earlier, it's a basic security practice, but it's also a good insight into where your risk is sitting and where your vulnerabilities are, and it can help you enable decisions for your other uh, security programs that you're doing. Um, it can allow you to respond to threats a lot quicker. Uh, rather than waiting to be attacked, you can get ahead of things. Um, it, it makes things a little bit more efficient too. So if you've got a well-established program where you're doing repeated steps, now you're not worrying about having to go in and you know, manually touch all these different systems, you know, uh, you should hopefully have some kind of mature software or central management program in there where you can take care of the organization with a small IT team. Um, you uh, have a lot of good visibility and reporting. I talked about that, you know, especially if you're a CIO, CISO, data officer, you really need to understand your risk and the reports that come out of your vulnerability management program are a huge part of understanding risk. It also may be necessary for compliance. So it keeps you in compliance for those programs that do require that. Um, and if you've, you know, if you, if you haven't been doing a good job of it before and you want to implement one now, it's still very valuable because you can quickly burn through, you know, what you've probably got a big backlog of vulnerabilities out there. Um, and then doing all this, of course, uh, shows that you're a mature security organization and if you have clients who are really security conscious, when they do those third-party vendor assessments, it'll show them that you can be trusted. Um, and then a really mature one, uh, and this is where we're at with PurpleSec, is uh, automation, right? That's like the final ultimate step, I think, for now, uh, is the automation side of things. Great. That's a pretty great summary of, of, of you know, just the table stakes of vulnerability management. It's something that I think every organization should be taking seriously, even if you are a small business, um, especially in today's threat landscape. Um, and you touched upon uh, what we do at PurpleSec. So you've been busy on the back end. You've been working hard at developing our program, bringing in automation, uh, bringing in uh, great tool sets and people to, to actually um, run, run these tools. 
Um, can you explain a little bit about how our program is different than uh, some other organizations? Yeah, I think our big focus here is automation and AI enhancement. So what our current solution is called AI powered vulnerability management. Um, we're focusing on AI and automation is, you know, the next paradigm in doing vulnerability management. The traditional way is, you know, throwing bodies and tech at it, make sure you've got a big group of people who can go log into systems and patch things and run scans, you know, and there's all these great tool sets in there, but you're really using the human to tie it all together. Um, and that can be uh, resource intensive and exhausting. And um, it's, you know, it's really not quite as fun, you know, unless you're, you're new, you know, I've done vulnerability management a long time ago in my career, and, you know, it can get pretty tedious and boring. And so, you know, that thought kind of went into what we developed here, which is taking uh, a large portion of the repetitive tasks out of the human hands and automating that, uh, and instead focusing on having the human validate the machine and, um, you know, help organize and report on the risk for the organization. We have some really smart, really qualified security people here, you know, and I, I don't want them to be doing things like just sitting out there patching stuff. We want them out there running really cool AI powered, you know, systems, trying to build something like a SOC. So uh, we've partnered with this company Vulcan. We've built out a really cool process for managing the automation of identifying, prioritizing, uh, assigning risk to, and setting up all of the patching processes and the mitigations, right? So where the human then comes in is, you know, now what we're looking at is, okay, we know what the risk is. We understand what's already prioritized. You know, we don't have to have somebody sifting through it. Um, we can take action immediately. And really, I mean, if you're, let's say you're a customer of ours and we, we drop in our AI powered vulnerability management system, you know, it takes a couple days to get all the connectors and everything up and running, hooked up into your current environment um, and, and talking to your scanners and your patching management systems and your ticketing systems and all that. Once that's set up uh, and it's underway, we can have our expert come in and begin remediating, creating risk acceptance plans and POEMs and mitigating these risks that very next day. You know, so the ramp up time is very quick uh, and you can turn the life cycle down to a 48 hour period if you want. You can really have our system running and every other day we've got patching happening, right? And every other day there's prioritization and scanning happening. So um, your 14 to 30 day risk windows become you know, two to five day risk windows. Right, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack in there. Uh, certainly don't have enough time to dive into every bit of it. Um, but you, you mentioned something that's interesting. You talk about risk quite a bit throughout this. Um, and I think something that we do that's you know, maybe not 100% unique, but it's certainly going towards the industry standard is uh, using uh, risk-based vulnerability management. Can you touch upon a little bit about what that is and, and why it's so important? Yeah, so the risk-based vulnerability management is it's really focused around the, the prioritization and orchestration of where you're focusing your vulnerability management efforts. So the traditional way is, you know, just kind of running a, a cycle where we're patching what's coming in, right? Maybe it's a first in, first out kind of thing, right? Coming in from our systems. What we're doing instead is we're assessing the entire landscape constantly at all times, and we're finding out not only where are our vulnerabilities, but you know, are they exploitable? What is the impact if they were exploitable? How likely are they to be exploited? And then it's also assessing where that system is. So if it's externally facing, is it internally facing? Uh, we're able to apply data classifications to it as well to say, you know, if you've got really risky customer data, PCI data, maybe things like that, uh, you know, those are obviously higher risk than you know, maybe your, your public website is a little bit lower risk than customer PCI data. So we take into account all of these very important factors of risk, right? And there's a lot of calculation that's done and, you know, it's not really new to do this, but what's new is that rather than having a bunch of people having to take all this together, we've got our automation system assessing this 
you know, using the artificial intelligence and communicating with our experts to say, this is what's the top risk for our client. And this is where we focus, right? And then we've got our experts going, taking the appropriate actions. Right. And I, and I think we talked about this a little bit in the benefits of how it drives down costs. I mean, certainly drives down costs on our end. That gets passed down on the, on the customer and it right. creates a, a seamless uh, integration into your, your vulnerability management and, and it, you know, it looks good on, on the bottom line. Well, importantly for those C-level people, the ones who need to consume the reports from a business perspective, we're able to deliver very robust, customizable reports and dashboards. So if you want to understand, you know, the dollar ROI, you know, maybe we can't get quite, you know, to the dollar to the vulnerability, but we can definitely show you the risk to your organization and the reduction to it. So that ROI conversation becomes a lot easier of, you know, what are we paying for as well? There's a huge amount of risk leaving our organization, which is uh, cost savings for the business. I can tell you right now, being on, on the business side, that uh, that would give me a lot of relief versus just purchasing a, a million dollar tech stack right. and saying, well, I hope I'm secure. Yep. Well, Josh, uh, thanks again for taking the time to walk through uh, vulnerability management as, as, as a whole and, and giving us a little bit of insight to what we do at PurpleStack. Yeah, it was great.